Hi, I'm Scott for ediblemusic.com. Ableton Live Lite is an included program that you might be getting started with if you've recently purchased an interface or a software bundle. And I'll help you get started with recording, virtual instruments, loops, and samples here in Ableton Live Lite. Come on in. Now, the first thing that I want you to do when you open up Ableton Live Lite is just to press the tab button on your keyboard. This will switch from arrangement view to session view and back again, if you like. You can also press these buttons on the top right corner to switch views. And I want you also to give attention to the triangles that are in the other corners. These can open and remove different views in case you need more screen space or in case you need to access these views. On the left is where all of your sounds and instruments and effects are stored. This is like your cupboard of effects and tools that you'll want to make use of. If you're not currently using them, you can close that. On the bottom left is the hide info view. I usually will always keep this open just because sometimes it provides useful little tidbits. And on the bottom right is the clip view or instrument view. And there are two menus here that are empty right now, but they'll fill up in a moment when we start making some music. Now here's a quick bit of advice. Learn the hotkeys, get accustomed to typing things in, changing parameters. It's fast, it's simple, it's precise. Whenever I'm editing or doing some sound design, I'll always have a hand on the key, keyboard so that I can change things quickly. When, oh, and also to save often. Um, many of the keyboard shortcuts will already be familiar to you, like undo and redo and duplicate, copy, paste, that kind of thing. And whenever I'm learning a new application, I always take a minute to scan through the menus so that I can take advantage of keyboard shortcuts. I'll also right click on objects to learn the contextual menus as well. It helps a lot with workflow because it's faster than a mouse and it keeps your brain focused on the music instead of navigating menus. In Ableton, some that you'll frequently use in addition to the normal ones that you're familiar with already are spacebar to begin playback, control T and control shift T will add new tracks, whether an audio track with control T or a MIDI track with shift control T. You can select multiple tracks and hit control G to group them. And you'll learn more as you go, but scanning the menus and the context menus is a way to learn a program a lot more quickly. Now we've got an understanding of how to navigate Ableton Live Lite. Let's start getting some sounds into it. If you're just using your computer audio and your computer keyboard with virtual instruments, you can get started right away on that. Let's choose basic silk horns, and I'm just gonna drag that. You can also double click it. And cool. And you can use your computer keyboard as a piano. Pretty cool. If you have a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI controller, you can go to preferences. Here you can adjust the visual settings of the program, uh, set custom file paths in case you have third party plugins that you want to use. And here's where you'll set up your devices and find your MIDI controller there. And if you're using a recording interface for your microphone, then you'll want to select ASIO and find your audio device there. Then find that microphone on the input and you're ready to record. Just like that. There's me talking. So it produces this audio file and now we can go and look at the clip and we can adjust the gain. There are editing capabilities in case you need to adjust the length or the pitch of a clip. 
And in this window is where you'll edit the audio clip or the MIDI clip. It'll show up down here. And you can zoom in either by clicking and dragging here on that top bar and edit things down if you want to. Now press tab again and we'll switch over to session view and you'll see that we have the instrument loaded up here but the recording doesn't show there. That's because session view is intended for kind of jamming and lay, laying out ideas, working things out, testing, auditioning things. If that's the kind of songwriter that you are, then I think that you'll find a lot of value in the session view in Ableton Live Lite and in the rest of the Ableton Live versions as well. It's very cool. It's different from most other programs, but it's very useful if you're performing live or if you're just at home demoing things out. And in order to show you how to do that, try out these templates. Here's one for eight track recording. This is the default live set when you open it, demo and sketch. And if you're just recording dialogue, then the podcast template will, will do you well there. Let's go to demo and sketch. And this project contains some drum beats that you can make use of. Different time signatures. So you can let this loop keep going and you can play along by arming the keys. Let's select the organ. And you can record them like this. And after recording the clip, it'll keep looping for us, so it'll keep playing as long as that's activated. switch over to the bass, let's lay in the bass. But you don't have to record as you play. If you have the track armed, you can just play into it. If you're jamming, then you can arm the track and just monitor it as you're playing. Now let's see if we can play something worth recording. <laughs> playing there. But you see how fun that can be, just switching between different instruments, letting the loop play. You could also just set up a loop to play and, and jam along on your guitar if you want. It's really fun. Let's go back to the default set and keep our focus on these two windows at the bottom and on the left side. Anytime you add an instrument or an effect to a track, it will show up here on the bottom. If I choose MIDI track here and add a drum rack, it appears here. And this is an empty drum rack. You can create your own drums by creating a drum rack like this and choosing the drum samples you prefer. There are different hits that you can choose and you can see that it lines up with different notes on the keyboard that you would play. So you can fill up your drum rack and then play on the keyboard. In addition to drums, you get an excellent synthesizer called Drift Simpler, in which you can load samples and play them on your keyboard. And there are many, many presets that you can use on these as well with a wide range of different instruments and sounds that you can play. Like the drum rack, you can group them together into, into an instrument rack by hitting Control G. And then you can stack instruments 
and invent your own sounds. And don't neglect the MIDI effects, especially if you're using a MIDI controller, but also to add some different styles to a MIDI track. Adding some light randomness to a programmed instrument will give some nice variety to the way it's triggered, much like how a person performs an instrument. So let's say you have a drum rack open and you've set up a pretty basic loop, say a four on the floor. Let's add hand claps there. I'm just adding these by double clicking the notes, which you can do in addition to playing them if you like. And what you can also do is highlight several and duplicate them. And I'll do that just to make things faster. Let's move over here. Right, a basic loop, but it's played very straightforwardly. If you select a MIDI effect and choose random, it will select other drum hits at random. Same with velocity. This is really great if you're playing uh, keyboards, but also for drums. If you add just a little bit of random, then the velocity shifts around a little bit, just the same as it would as if a drummer were playing it. But one that I especially think that you'll find use from is the grooves. Each groove will show you a little preview using um, just a, a wood block or a kind of a metronomic it'll at, be added to the groove pool which in addition to all the triangles that we saw there's this little one right here and you can add it to a clip and notice how the groove changes I'll add another one. Different as well. And you can tell that it does, in fact, add a greater sense of groove to the MIDI. So especially if you're drawing them in with your mouse, making use of the groove pool will add a really nice humanizing element to the sounds. Now let's say you've been demoing some ideas and track them into the arrangement view here. You can just click and drag them over into the session view and vice versa. So if you're building a song on one view, it's very easy to move back and forth. Say, for example, the arrangement view is your, your final draft of the song, and you've got all the different sketches in your session view, then the, the song parts that you choose can really easily be transferred over to that final draft on the arrangement view. And if you like, you can work back and forth between them to record parts, lay down some ideas, and compare between them, and then add your choice into the final arrangement of the song. When you've got your song parts coming together, you can use the EQ and saturation for tone, the compressor for balance, The chorus in Ableton is really nice. And the delay and reverb effects you can use for space and size. And helpfully, you've got a tuner and utility. I really like how neatly organized the Ableton effects interfaces are with no distractions, clean parameter displays. It's a very readable workstation that contains a lot of power in its simplicity. Now you've got your first track coming together, and when it's ready for mixing, I want to help you learn how to get it sounding great. I designed a series called the 5 Day Foundation, which takes you through some crucial approaches to mixing, in depth, one day at a time, on balance and consistency and excitement using EQ, compression, saturation, and all the effects that you now have available to you here in Ableton, so you can get into that cupboard of effects and tools with confidence and ease. Join me there at ediblemusic.com slash 5 
days.